revelation of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, 
marched through the wilderness. The earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, on your inheritance. You refreshed the land when they were weary. Your people found their own land. In your you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, the King of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rises in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over the hills. His strength is in the sky. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God.
They have known everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have glorified, I, I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As many of you know, I have had lots of jobs in my career. I taught school, I became a priest, I became a chaplain, I became a hospice chaplain. And as I was a hospice chaplain in Sydney, Nebraska, I sometimes saw terminally ill patients trying to figure out ways to be a part of their family's special events even after they had departed this life. Modern technology provides us ways to leave messages for the future. If these patients had time to work in advance, they leave special messages and words of endearment for birthdays and other life events. Our, our one such story is about a young mother dying of breast cancer. Her death was imminent, and she knew that she would not be there for her daughter's 16th birthday, her graduation from high school or college, her wedding, or even the birth of her children. So she left special cards and videos so that her daughter would know she wanted to be present on those special days. In the cards and videos, the mother articulated the endearing words that she wanted to share with her daughter on those special occasions. Above all else, this mother wanted her daughter to remember their special relationship, even though she couldn't touch her physically anymore. 
The mother wanted her daughter to know that she was still rooted in her mother's love and that her spirit would always remain close. The story of a mother's love for her daughter is perhaps a small window into our gospel reading this morning. We never want to leave the people we love behind without reminding, without remaining part of their future. Clearly, Jesus cared about his followers and us. In this prayer, Jesus is asking God to bless us and provide protection for us after his departure. In this prayer, he is reminding us that the Father has given to them, given to him, and now he is giving them back to the Father. We will never be alone. We will never be alone. This passage takes place after the Last Supper and just before of Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. The disciples have noticed that Jesus was acting mysterious as he began to use words they did not understand and had never heard before. At the Passover meal, instead of using traditional words spoken at the meal, he raised the bread and said, this is my body given for you. And then took the cup and said, this is my blood of the new covenant given for the forgiveness of sins. An element of fear and anxiety began to rest upon some of the disciples. Jesus could see it in their faces and hear it in their voices. Jesus wanted to give them courage and strength so he did what he always did. He began to pray. He prayed what is called the high priestly prayer. Often when Jesus felt the need to pray, he went off by himself. But this time was different. He prayed in the midst of his followers. Jesus was being intentional this time. He wanted the disciples to hear his every word. He prayed for himself. He prayed for the disciples, by the way, which includes you and me, as he prayed <coughs> for the church. Jesus did not attempt to glorify himself. He glorified the Father and acknowledges that everything he had including his followers, belonged to the Father. I'm not going to tell you that I understand the twists and turns in this prayer. Sometimes we just have to take what Jesus said on faith. I believe that Jesus was leaving a framework for his disciples to empower them to accomplish the work he had given them to do. Just as the Father was glorified by the Son when Jesus completed the work, now that his work was finished, he gave the disciples the command to finish what he started. The point of this work, our mission, is to make the name of God the Father and the Son known to the world. Our mission is to make the name of God the Father and God the Son known to the world. To teach Jesus' teaching, to live in fellowship with one another, and to come together to worship God. It is through knowing God and by following his commandments that we glorify him. The task given to the disciples was to be Christ's witnesses in all the world. What Jesus prayed for them 
was to have a strong knowledge of who they were rooted in and to have a strong relationship with the Father and the Son. He prayed for them to have a sense of community so that they could come together to worship and glorify God. And he prayed for the protection of his disciples as they ventured out into the far corners of the earth to accomplish the work they had been given to do. All of their work, all of their accomplishments were for one reason, and one reason only, to glorify God. Have you ever noticed we don't really know much about Jesus' followers? Perhaps this was God's plan all along, that we come to the realization that as Christians, it's not about what we do individually. It's not about fame or fortune. It's about what we do collectively for God's glory. Like Jesus, everything we do should point to the glory of God. We know that the disciples were full of fear and anxiety after Jesus' arrest and crucifixion. What would happen if they had relied on their own abilities to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth? Would we even be here this morning? Hmm. If our mission is to proclaim the gospel, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to teach the world about Jesus, how are we doing? On a scale of 1 to 10, where does St. Barnabas fall in that continuum? Are we engaged in the same type of care as the mother dying of cancer so that her child would know the depth of her love in her absence? Let's do a reality check. And oh, by the way, this reality check is for myself just as much as it is for you. What have we done lately to glorify God? I don't expect you to answer out loud. Because <laughs> I'm not going to answer out loud. But what have we done lately to glorify God? Let's get creative. How do we, and you can answer this, how do we glorify God on a daily basis? In our lives, right now, how do we glorify God? We help others. We help others. Prayer. I'm sorry? Prayer. Prayer. We're here. We're here collectively to worship God this morning. That glorifies God. Where? Fellowship. Fellowship. Absolutely. Showing kindness. Showing kindness. Uh, pretty soon that offering plate's going to come around. That's one of the ways that we glorify God. We have by supporting than, the church. We have, okay. we have others than our friends. I'm sorry? We have others than our friends. Yes, sir. That's right. Can we help others even when it's hard and inconvenient? Or as a collective, we do that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We count our blessings. Count our blessings, absolutely. Especially in this day and time when it's so easy to be so negative about everything. When we can count our blessings, then we have grateful hearts. Okay, here's another one for you. Are you ready? How do you personally spread the good news of Jesus Christ? Let's be open and close at meetings about who I am. Yes, ma'am. This is a tough one, especially for Episcopalians, because we've kind of been taught that our uh, religion is private. Our religion is not private. 
Our job is to spread the word. So how do you do that? Through your actions. Through our actions. Through our activism. Through activism. We show people that we all know that we love them also. Yes, sir. Through studying his word, Bible study, gathering. Yeah, it's through the studying of that word that we become stronger and we know more about the person that we follow. It gives us a foundation, a basis in which to pattern our lives. Okay, here's the next one. Y'all, you know I love questions. <laughs> Are you, like the disciples, full of fear and anxiety in talking about God? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh. Diane is honest. <laughs> and, and you know, truthfully, because we think our religion is personal, there is anxiety about talking about that. In our daily lives, where are the possibilities to share the good news of Jesus Christ? It's just a simple bless you if you have the uh, grocery line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My daughter and my son have taught me <coughs> that when I go to the grocery store or to Walmart, I look at the person's name and I recognize them as a person as opposed to just cashew. And I ask them, how's your day? And sometimes I might even have the courage and the strength to say, God bless you. I hope your day goes well. I mean, we're blessings to people all day, every day. We don't even know it. But what would happen if we were intentional about speaking about God? to the people we meet every day. Okay, what's keeping you from spreading the good news of Jesus Christ? I think we kind of talked about the anxiety and fear that most of us feel. Jesus prayed for your protection as you set out to accomplish the mission he has given you to do. If things continue on the current trajectory in the mainline churches, and we do not do our part, <laughs> who will know the word of God in 20 to 30 years? It is truly something to think about. The good news is, God gives us everything we need to support that mission. Amen. Amen. As we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 356 in the Book of Common Prayer. Mm -hmm. Book, no, 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, God the Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your bulletin. We pray for the church throughout the world. Draw us together in unity and compassion. Help us to walk in the path of our biblical ancestors as we are reaching out and adding to the family of Christ. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of this nation and all the communities of the world. Help them to find direction and hear your voice as they shepherd your people through the gateway of peace and mercy. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the awe and splendor of your creation that springs forth in new life. Help us to protect and preserve the gift of your creation for future generations. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for all in our community, especially for those facing hunger, poverty, and like the housing and health resources. Help us to be your vessels, reaching out to those in need, so that they may see you and the wonders you provide. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or in any kind of trouble, especially Diane, Linda, Marge, Lynn, Carla, Nick, Sarah, George, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Tom, Jeff, Michael, Genevieve, the Potts family. Trinity, Zan, Pat, Don, Betty Mae, Jean, Arthur, Tom, Rebecca, Melanie, Silas, Avery, Danny, Sarah, <coughs> Gilbert, Crew, Katie, Kathleen, Jerry, Sheila. Glenn, Brett, and Robert. Deliver them from anger, hurt, fear, and sadness. Provide them with your promise that you are always with them, O shepherd of those in need. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our prayer. In our Dioxium cycle of prayer, we pray for our congregation in Kingsman, King of Peace. We also pray for our ecumenical partners, especially St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in Folkestone. In our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we pray for the congregation in Germany, especially St. Paul the Apostle, St. Titus, 
and St. Agnetius. May they continue to bring light into their community. Hallelujah. Risen Christ, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died. May they dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Risen, Risen Christ, Christ, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You may add your own prayers at this time out of allowing a silence. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. you. Point of personal privilege. Um, I'm so delighted to be here with you this morning. Uh, I really, truly love this congregation. I sometimes feel like Paul in his letters. You know, I go from one congregation to the next. <laughs> Things change in the in between time, and then sometimes I sit in the pew, which actually is very nice for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I get those affirmations mixed up sometimes. And sometimes I do it the other way when the priest is speaking on stage. <laughs> it's, it's just something that you do forever and ever and ever, and then it's hard to make those switches. But uh, I'm very happy to be here this morning. I'm very happy that Susan is able to be um, visiting with her mother-in-law. <coughs> such an important thing for her to be able to do. Um, I'm just so excited for y'all. You're doing great things, and. Um, it's, it's really nice to see um, a spark of new life in this congregation. Um, so just keep doing what you're doing and loving each other in the way you do. Uh, Susan, do you have an answer? Yes, I do. Yes. First, I um, want to thank you, Tom, for being here today and for next week as well. We're looking forward to it. I got to remember that next week. You're the flame. You're the flame. Oh, I'm <laughs> Um, and I want to thank everybody out there in Facebook land. Um, welcome to our, our congregation. If you want to come in person, we'd love to have you. If you can, stay online. Um, I want to also let you know that we have a soup kitchen project. Um, it's up to you all if you want to participate in it. <coughs> Churches do volunteer during, um, actually it's like 4th of July week because kids, the soup kitchen is closed. So the church is volunteering to make sandwiches for 100 people. And they take it, where do they take it to, Kevin? Soup kitchen? Yes. Okay. And, um, and we make little sack lunches and hand them out. Um, 
This year, the dates that are still in, uh, available are the 3rd, the 4th, and the 7th. If anyone is interested in participating this, in this or spearheading this, please see myself or Kathy after this service and let them know. Um, they need to know by May 31st. So if you're interested in, in helping out the Miss Worthy mission, which is, oh, wait, didn't you just mention that, Miss <laughs> <laughs> It's all connected. <laughs> Um, please, please feel free to to um, let us know, and uh, you know we'll, we'll get the stuff and we'll, we'll make the sandwiches and things like that. So please let me know or let Kathy know, and um, we can pick a date. They do need to know by May. So thank you very much. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing.
Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise, praise you, you, we bless you, you we give, give thanks to you, you and, and we, we pray, pray to you, you Lord our God. God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon these gifts and sanctify them, showing them to be the holy gifts of your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find ourselves, our inheritance, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with St. Barnabas, and all the saints who have found favor in, with you in ages past, we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ is taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
blameless of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. 